Hello, people. It's 10.35 in the morning, and it's the 7th of uh, November, 2023. And, uh, well, I'm in Minsk as usual. I've always been in Minsk, you know, the last several months. I need to get out, I guess, and get somewhere, but I'm too busy, you know, got classes now and all that. We're going to be doing uh, things like that podcast, uh, live streaming. So and that should be maybe in another week. Like I said, around the 15th or so of November. So, and it's the 7th now. That gives us about one week. So it should come out about that way. Actually, the first video or so, or a, and I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking it will be a live stream still, but uh, maybe, maybe not. It won't be, may, it won't, possibly won't be to the same sort of uh, level that we'll be actually using. Uh, when it really gets started and we start having a lot of guests on, things like that, talking to them at least uh, by live feed or something like that. I like the color of these leaves. Some green, some yellow, light green, and red back here. I've been in this area before. Let me maybe go up this way. Right now it's a holiday, so there's not many people around. And that's why this guy here is out. What you doing? It's not warm up there. What are you doing, huh? <laughs> kind of a pretty stray cat. I'm sure it's a stray cat. There's no houses around here, really. Okay, let's get into some news. There's a lot of strange things going on. So, but I'll get into that. I have a few th things I got off of Mike Jones' site. A lot of people want to hear more about what's going on there, because I believe a lot of you can't get his telegram, of course, since he's been deleted from YouTube, just like John Mark Dugan. John Mark Dugan's been putting up some things. Lately, not as much, but uh, Mike Jones, I guess he's been also kind of busy, but he's still doing a lot of work on telegram. But I believe that there is recently a documentary put out about him, about him, I believe, on Russian TV about his work in Gaza. I mean, uh, not Gaza, in Donbass, getting everything mixed up here. So I think it was aired on some Russian television station already like a day or so ago, but I, I didn't see it. I'm hoping I can maybe find that. Too bad he doesn't have a YouTube channel I, that he could put a link to that on, but I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. Okay. One thing that he's, he put out, a lot of people are putting, being, uh, are putting this out. It's like the Defense Chief of Iran, Brigadier General Mohammad Reza, has threatened the U.S. with a strike if it does not get Israel to implement a ceasefire. And a lot of people, of course, are coming out and saying, hey, that's, you can't do that. You know, but I don't know. A lot of people are using a lot of strong language, but, but they're not really following through. The United States, too, don't do it. You know, you heard Blinken and... and uh, and of course, Joe Biden, don't do it, you know, but uh, I'll tell you what, it might be kind of a fair fight if you had, say, Iran and Hezbollah against the United States in the Middle East, because that's pretty far from American territory. And, um, you know, a lot of these weapons and all these supplies that are going to Israel, massive, massive amounts from many parts of the world, they are uh, not just necessarily designed to help Israel um, in their current fight with so-called Hamas, really now, which is actually against the uh, Palestinians and may eventually be against all the Arabic peoples, um, because Israel already had vastly more than Hamas. So why would the U.S. need to be sending all of these supplies? You know, that's, of course, just in case there's a bigger war. And the United States, as you know, they really, really want to get into a war against somebody a much bigger war than what they had going on in uh, in the Donbass area, because it <laughs> for the the big business people, the big masters of the universe that are behind the United States, it didn't kill enough people. They need to decimate a lot of people, especially they didn't kill enough Russians. So they have to kill a lot of the undesirables, and of course, in this case, it'll be the you know some Arabic peoples, Palestinians. You know, and the Israelis are going to love that because, uh, I, like I've said, and a lot of other people have said, the Israelis say 
they look at those people as animals and not human beings, and so they'd love to exterminate them and then reach, go inside there and take that land away, uh, you know, for the master race, uh, excuse me, God's chosen people to, uh, to take over those lands that God gave to them. You know, God's a real estate agent. You all know that very well, don't you? Uh, God gave it to us. So I'm trying to say, well, what, what were God's exact words when he said that, that they get that land? I don't know. And, and where do they have the evidence that God actually said it? But you can't go into that sort of thing because people don't really have an answer for you. So, <laughs> and now, you know, I'll, I'll just intersperse a lot of the information that I have here. You know, a lot of time I could have uh, uh, arranged it all like a, like a university uh, paper or something like that and put it all where it's supposed to go. But I just, I'll just throw facts in here and there because I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just uh, putting out the information. So, so I have a little bit of a Zelensky right now. He stated that Russia, North Korea, and Iran have sponsored Hamas attacks. You know, he's trying to get, finding some way to gain the spotlight again. And this is one of the ways they said, Russia sponsored them. Russia sponsored them. So you have to go after Russia. I mean, it's like, he, I don't know if he thinks that everybody is that stupid or if he's that stupid. Maybe he, I don't know, like uh, I think Alex Christoforo was saying he had some kind of a, he has a lot of power, a lot of powder. Powder? Power. No, that was dot, Kim.com, I guess. One of Alex Christoforo's latest videos. Uh, uh, it was... Uh, Zelensky probably meant to say, I have a lot of powder, you know, so and everybody, maybe everybody is supposed to go along with this powder. <laughs> and, you know, he invented Trump, invited Trump to come and visit him. And, you know, again, Alex Christoforo and I think Alexander McCurr, as they talk about the Zelensky curse, you know, a lot of people who seem to get mixed up with Zelensky seem to somehow lose out very badly, they lose whatever status they have or positions. And of course, Trump declined. Israel has admitted they dropped over 6,000 bombs in Gaza in one week. That's the more than the United States dropped in Afghanistan in an entire year. Huge, huge, huge amount of bombs, you know, and uh, most of those bombs, as you know, are from the United States. But wait a minute, they didn't have any more to give to Ukraine. Well, let's get into that a little bit more too. Uh, and of course, they're still loading up Ukraine. I mean, uh, loading up Israel with more and more bombs. It's coming from all over the world, as I said already. Um, the, uh, you have to also consider that Gaza is much, much smaller than Afghanistan much smaller than Ukraine, and yet on that little area they bombed with 6,000, and these are not little bombs, and I think Blinken has come out and said, ah, can't you use smaller bombs? You know, because they're using these massive bombs, and it looks like, you know, if they drop a bomb on one house, it affects, you know, half of a block. It, it has a huge amount of destruction. One bomb in an entire neighborhood, not just one house, you know, I guess, these are wimpy bombs that Russia is using, I suppose. And we see that, you know, I thought those were big explosions. But it's nothing compared to what the, the bombs that Israel is using. You know, but I thought it was these 155 millimeter artillery shells. But that's a completely different thing. These uh, aerial bombs from that, that Israel is using, the ones that we see, they're not these little bombs. A lot of these uh, prisoners of war that Russia is getting you know, the Ukrainian soldiers, they're coming out and saying that, uh, um, you know, the ones in the Zaporozhye area, that, that the uh, Ukrainian government or forces are, they're massacring anybody that they suspect of being sympathetic to Russia. So this, it's, it's not that they've done, been traitors, but if, if they find people that are sympathetic to Russia, they massacre them. Incredible. Just for the fact that you say, if you say anything positive about Russia, I guess. Hmm. And US believes that Russia may be negotiating with Libya to establish a naval base there. 
Hmm. Incredible on that too. I guess the U.S. is in a panic on that one. I'll, I'll bet they did all of that to destroy Libya, and then Russia is going to come in and maybe bring stability again to Libya, and they can't have that. I don't know. What is that? This Nietzsche once said, "Out of chaos comes order." So the U.S. they want to establish chaos instability, and then they want to establish the order under their own recipe. So, you know, and as of yesterday, I think it was even early yesterday, they say that it was, I think, the, the, the known death toll, the known death toll of those killed in um, Gaza are 10,130. But of course, there's still maybe thousands underneath the rubble that they don't know about. They still have to count. I'll tell you, this is going to be some really high and shocking numbers, and even Ursula von der Leyen has been shocked about that, and we'll, we'll mention that too in a bit. And uh, as of yesterday, it was 4,100 children. You know, a lot of these, see, there's, there's no end. There's just no end to these horrific videos of, let me just say it, dead children. Dead children, we're talking about toddlers, talking about babies. You know, and then when they wrap them up in, uh, in cloths and body bags, you know, even though it looks pretty stark, you know, you, you have to like say, well, show no emotion on that because you don't know what's, what's in these body bags. I'm not saying that they're lying, but it's, uh, but just the, the other parts are so bad and you see them trying to do CPR on a, on a two-year-old baby, you know, a baby girl or whatever. And then, I don't know, unfortunately, they have a lot of youth. I've seen even youth, Israeli youth, like celebrating this and making fun of the Palestinians for all the dead children. Makes you wonder what, uh, what sort of a government engineers a society that makes their youth, their youth have no appreciation of life. It's just, just saying, just talking, just talking. Huh? And... Uh, but as, as they're watching this, you, you, you see easily and you get a sense and a feel. Uh, you hear and, and all this, the, uh, and even economically, you know, where the sentiments lie for these people that have provoked this, provoked these wars, you know, mostly, of course, the United States. And, of course, they have their agent... They're agent provocateurs, provocateurs, provocateur, maybe you want to call them, you know, which are the governments, you know, you can say the Zelensky government or the Netanyahu government. Mm. And they, they come out and they say they're the victims. Oh, we're a victims of Russian aggression. I mean, we should be allowed to hate the Russians, try to exterminate them, even if they've lived on this land for thousands of years. Uh, well, maybe God didn't give us this land, but it's always been Ukrainian, even though we, own, we know that it's only a few decades ago that Lenin gave the land to us and Stalin gave the land to us and Khrushchev gave the land to us. They've never been Ukrainian, Ukrainian in all of world history, but yet in all of world history, they have been Ukrainian. How does that work? The ancient Ukrainians dug out the Black Sea with their bare hands, even though the ancient Ukrainians, they never bordered the Black Sea. So what did they do? They crossed these Russian lands of Russian peoples and dug out the Black Sea, knowing, knowing that in the future they would be getting the Black Sea as gifts from the Russian people, from the Russian leaders. Actually, they weren't Russian leaders, they were Ukrainian. And if you talk about the Soviet Union, like I've mentioned before, they, they talk about how the Soviet Union was so cruel to the Ukrainian people when, in fact, the Soviet Union was run by Ukrainian... <laughs> the leaders were Ukrainian for the, you know, for most of the history of the Soviet Union. And Ukrainian, as I've already said, and, and anybody that knows anything about the history, which I don't know that much, I'm telling you, I, I studied history, but I didn't study that history. But anybody that knows anything about history at least of that region, they will know that Ukraine has been the spoiled 
favored child of the Soviet Union the whole time, if there was any advantages ever given to any country, more than all the other countries, it was Ukraine. Ukraine got everything. It's like a spoiled child. And you know how sometimes a spoiled child is. They say, oh, how come I don't get anything? I, oh, poor me, poor me. And that's, I guess, Ukraine. And they're even like that right now. So uh, Ursula van der Leyen making her trip to Ukraine and saying, oh, we're going to try to fast track you. Even if you meet no criteria whatsoever to get into the European Union, we are going to try to fast track you into the European Union. And uh, I'll tell you, if I were anybody that wishes uh, the fall of the European Union, they would be cheering this on because once you get Ukraine in there, it's going to fall, it's going to drop like a rock. You know, they're going to be having to pay so much money, even if Ukraine has this vast resources. You know, it's such a corrupt country, vast corruption, that all that money is going to disappear into certain people's pockets. There's going to be a lot of millionaires created from all that money coming from the Soviet, well, from the pockets, of, not in the Soviet, uh, from the, Europe, the pockets of the people of the European Union and uh, they're going to be getting poor while there's going to be the corrupt, certain corrupt Ukrainians getting fabulously rich. And uh, yeah, and there's going to be no end to that. No end to all that money flowing there. There's some old Soviet truck back here. So good luck on that one. So if Putin were kind of a nasty type of guy, he would say, please, Please put Ukraine in the European Union. Okay, just just saying that again. Um, yeah, but you watch as you know this so-called little skirmish uh, of Hamas against Israel that apparently I don't know must have happened because you know like I really don't even like saying that because. If you see some people that are normally credit worthy people that were not there, that were not there, they were not in Israel, and they're saying, oh yes, Hamas attacked Israelis. You have to also be skeptical because they weren't there, I wasn't there, I don't even know really what happened. And then you're finding out there's direct evidence that most of these Israelis were killed by Israelis. Mike Jones put that out, Gray Zone put that out, the Haaretz. Haaretz newspaper or publication, there's no newspapers probably anymore, but they put that out and I think, and there's so many witnesses that say that the Israeli military killed at least the vast amount of these Israelis and of course they blamed it on Hamas. So, hmm. And it's very strange that nobody really ever talks about this. They talk about uh, Hamas being so bad when who knows, if, if, if Hamas was involved in this, I, I don't know that they have a policy of killing innocent people. So maybe, maybe, I don't know. But then a lot of these people, apparently, they were settlers and these were radical settlers. And of course, a lot of these settlers, you know, they hate the Palestinians and they, they're even worse than the military. They are actually civilian military. They're like a militia and they're out in these outposts. And a lot of that time, their mission is to dispossess Palestinians, kill them if possible, if they can get away with it, or do anything to provoke fights between the two. It's, they're very terrible, these, uh, these settlers. So saying how brutal or whatever you, uh, Hamas is, I, I would be very skeptical about that. And I, I'm wondering what George Galloway would say about that. I, if I, when we get him on in the podcast, I'd like to say, ask him about that if this, uh, if this uh, skirmish is still going on between these two sides, two sides. So let's go into that. And um, well, anyway, I was talking about this. I had still written some other things about this skirmish. I mean, this thing about, uh, about the, the West with Ukraine and, and how they, let me see. I should probably read some of my notes here. Uh, well, I think what I was trying to say is that, uh, you know, Ukraine acts like they are the victims in the U.S. Oh, we're the victims and Russia started this, this unprovoked attack, you know. We were just killing people, you know, since 2014, bombing the civilians. I mean, we, don't we have a right to do that? 
And of course, we control the global media and make everybody think that we are the victims. It's sort of like 9-11 uh, when you had, was it, 2,000 some odd people and, and everybody cried about that for so, so long. But when you have other countries, you know, people dying, you know, in the thousands, look at the, look at, I mean, at least people are complaining about what's going on there in, um, in, in Gaza, but nobody was really complaining because, uh, you know, the United States con controls the global media about, what is it, 14,000 people were killed in the Donbass, and there's hardly any mention of that. I mean, most people don't know about that. So that's why they say, oh, Russia is so cruel. Hmm. And they don't talk about the Ukrainians killing 14,000 people. So, hmm. But when you have Israel and everybody now, of course, uh, whatever they think or whatever they say or make you believe, or maybe even what happened, I don't know what happened with uh, Hamas there in uh, uh, coming out of Gaza or something and doing something to some Israeli people partying or whatever, I don't know. Uh, what's happened afterwards, of course, Israel is a thousand times more powerful than Hamas. And they're probably very many times more powerful than Hezbollah and Hamas put together. Um, and if the USA enters this, of course, it'll be like, uh, gosh, it'll be like a, a, a linebacker for the Denver Broncos against a, an ant, you know. But do you get the other Arab nations involved, you know, like, uh, like I said, if you get Iran involved, I, you know, it starts to even things out a little bit because the USA is far from home. And a lot of times the wars are lost by logistics. That's how it was lost, I believe, um, when Napoleon invaded Russia. Napoleon, he was way ahead of everybody. He'd conquered virtually all of Europe. And then he decided, oh, I'm going to go after Russia. And then that's when he lost. Normally everybody loses that, that tries to attack Russia, no matter what. Even the Germans look like the sieges of uh, Stalingrad or something like that. But if, uh, if this, this I, like everybody's saying, you know, this is very close to starting World War III. Uh, you have the, the rules-based order, which means that uh, countries aligned with the USA, they don't have to obey any rules. And all the other countries have to go by the rules. If not, you know, they'll use the media against you and make you look like you're, you're the bad guy. <laughs> the, the rules <laughs> are for those opposed to the establishment. The other ones don't have to go by rules. If you're Great Britain or Israel, and look at who's the leader with this relationship between Israel and the United States. And you, we're made to think that the USA is, is going to Israel and and saying, don't be so cruel, don't be so cruel, stop being so brutal and killing so many children. How much of that is true and how much of that is not true? I don't know. But uh, a lot of time, or a lot of what I was trying to say here is, you know, like trying to show the sentiment of these people. You know, you have the, the sentiment, say, for example, of the, the leaders of both of these conflicts. You have Benjamin Netanyahu, and you have Zelensky. And these people, as you notice, they don't really have much respect for any human lives. You know, if you have the Israeli military probably giving, given orders to kill even, their, even the Israeli people, which I have no doubt is true. And obviously to kill what they call animals, which are Palestinians. Arabs in general, and I think a lot of the Arabs should realize that any kind of deal that they've made with any other Arab nations, you know, to try to prevent hostilities <laughs> is just, just for appeasement. And of course, I'm not saying that Israel wants to go in and take over all these Arab countries because I, I don't know, I doubt that that is any kind of a plan at this moment or at this time, you know, they have what they want is their lands. And of course, it's to eliminate in any way possible those lands from anybody that is not uh, white-skinned Israelis. So, 
or any sort of maybe Arabs that don't want to be the slaves, cleaning ladies and things like that of the Israeli peoples. I don't want to say Jews because a lot of these Zionists, they don't, they don't even like Jews at all. You see a lot of film footage also where you have uh, Israeli authorities really beating on Jews, uh, especially Orthodox Jews, because they, they want peace with the Palestinians, most of them do, and, uh, and the Israelis don't. So, I'm ta well, the Zionist Israelis, let me just go that far. Um, and what else do we want to say here? But you look at, say, Zelensky and, and, uh, and even Netanyahu. Uh, Netanyahu, he, he, has, he has more uh, respect for a sheet of toilet paper than he does for these Palestinians. And uh, Zelensky, I don't even think he has as much respect for his own Ukrainians. He just gets in front of the cameras once in a while, once in a while, and cries a little bit you know, for the lives of, of Ukrainians, you know, just to get some money. I think he was, and, w and when he sits there and cries, he's just crying for money. He doesn't cry about the, the lives of, of Ukrainians. You know, they're all expendable. They're more expendable, like I say, than a sheet of toilet paper for him. Apparently, this is a really, a really shocking stuff. I mean, it makes you sick, it makes you, makes you really sick. Um, so these guys are, both Netanyahu and Zelensky are nothing more than front men, front men for the establishment, you know. Like, they're like fully dedicated puppets. Yes, and the U.S. are, of course, puppets of... The, the politicians of the U.S. are puppets for their donors in order to stay with in these powerful and privileged positions. So they will do anything that those, those people want them to do. I, I don't know. You, some people would call them prostitutes, I guess. Prostitutes for the establishment, their own establishment. And particularly, <laughs> Joe Biden. Joe Biden. It's, it's a holiday and I see a garbage truck. Going. Well, Joe Biden, as I've mentioned, you know, that's his project. Ukraine is Joe Biden's project. So you all know that. You could just as easily say that Zelensky and uh, Netanyahu, they, they both have a deep hatred of humanity. So they're perfectly willing, willing to get to exterminate certain portions of humanity. <laughs> you know, it's much different than those of you that are on this site. You know, a lot of us hate to, hate to see all this stuff going on and and sometimes if you if a lot of you find yourself rooting and you want to, the USA you know for ships to be sunk and thereby maybe seeing soldiers get killed or something like that i think a lot of you would only be saying that in the, in the light of maybe um believing that the USA, that that will deter them. But like I said, even those people, a lot of them, they, they have no respect of any human lives, at least not, the, not our lives, maybe their own buddies, their family, their rich people. But the rest of us are just, just expendables to them. So if, if you have a whole bunch of uh, US soldiers getting killed, they're not gonna, all they're gonna say is, hey, how, how dare you slap my dog? I'm gonna kill you for that. That's about it. Mike Jones, he also put on his Telegram channel, the, uh, the former Austrian foreign minister, Karen Kneissel. She was interviewed after a trip to St. Petersburg, and she had the guts to come out and say that the Russians were more friendly and helpful than Germans or Austrians. And now, uh, <laughs> well, she said that, that in her country, Austria, and in Germany, um, generally the people are hostile towards foreigners you know and I, I kind of can't blame them because they've been made that way by their governments importing anyone and everyone they possibly can to flood into the country and of course that's a Soros project and I think Soros who was it uh, Elon Musk said that Soros hates humanity 
you know, because he's, you know, importing these people in, it's, it's like knowing that these people are going to be at each other's throats because they have differences in culture and then importing them in masses, knowing that there's probably going to be economic problems as well. And uh, the governments of these countries think, well, yeah, we'll import them in because they have a lot of babies. And of course, that's going to help. And our people are not reproducing fast enough. So anyway, we're going to get all these babies in and that will help our economy in the future. Now, that's, that's their logic. But Elon Musk <laughs> uh, knows and probably so he knows Soros' mind probably that, that it's, it's mostly just to cause instability. Obviously, Vladimir Putin even mentioned that. Not about Soros, but a lot of these governments think that way anyway. So, and these uh, the Russian Security Council secretary Patrushev, he's raised the alarm that Ukraine is seeking, or at least they're planning or considering, to set off a dirty bomb at the appropriate time when. Uh, the political atmosphere would seem right to where Zelensky can again gain the initiative for public opinion. So it would be a false flag and he would probably set that off in some area where there's a lot of Russians, but under the control of Ukraine to make it look like Russia did that. And of course he would, he could kill some Russians. So that might be the Kharkov region. Maybe Odessa, I don't know. And then to get, again, huge amounts of money so we can get more houses and more power, I mean powder or uh, powder, no, whatever. Uh, you know how he is. And uh, yeah, he just wants that spotlight. Grab the spotlight from Israel. And the spotlight means more money and more money means more powder, I mean power, and more wealth and mansions. So. If you can't give us, can't give us some financial support, okay, okay, please give us a credit, and we will give you back money after the war. And I saw somebody else also speculating because I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's being put out so much anymore. How much money Zelensky has? But some people are putting him to have way over five billion dollars now, which means he's got at least double the amount that Donald Trump has. So you think that Donald Trump is some really rich billionaire running around, but Zelensky has far more than Donald Trump, apparently. He's obviously got more money than Donald Trump. There's no doubt about that. And it's not that he has it all in houses. You know, he's got it in lots of uh, assets. As you know, he runs uh, the media, the entire media. He owns it, basically, the entire media of Ukraine and many, many, many other uh, aspects of the economy. He actually owns it. It belongs to Zelensky. So it's incredible. He is the biggest oligarch by far in Ukraine, in case you didn't know that. But it's like, it's kind of on the hush hush because uh, he runs around in a green sweatshirt to make you think <laughs> that he's something different than he actually is. It's maybe like that John Fetterman guy that runs around in a hoodie and short pants, even in cold weather. I don't know. Makes it look like, you know, like, like these are like crappy things, you know, to make them look like they're poor people. I guess John Fetterman's from a rich family anyway. Huh. <laughs> and Zelensky, I don't know if I can put that video up. I should try to put a little of these little clips up here. Zelensky, he's like sitting there crying and begging. He says, oh, give me the, give me money on credit. Uh, oh, you know, send me some money, please. I need more money. You know, he's talking about for his war efforts and all that. But when he says that, when he says, oh, give me the money on credit. So it makes you wonder, you know, you mean the other parts weren't on credit? I mean, in other words, they were giving him money as gifts, as free gift that he doesn't have to pay back because he's saying now that he'll pay the, mon the new money. If, if you don't have any money now, pay me money anyway, and I'll pay that back. I'll pay that back. And uh, it's like saying, well, you mean you don't have to pay back all the rest of that other money that you've been getting? These hundreds of billions of dollars, it's just right out of taxpayers' pockets, not just the American people, but it's out of everybody's pockets. Everybody, everybody in the world, basically, because uh, 
the US dollar is the world's reserve currency. As I've said before, that means that all of us are paying a portion of that, just that the American people are paying probably a little bit more. And uh, I don't know. Well, you know what I'm getting at. It's not a very good thing, is it, huh? Not very nice, not very nice to be stealing all of our money. Money that your children haven't even earned yet, your grandchildren. I'll tell you what, the money that, you, that they're paying to Ukraine, that's not even gonna be made. That's not gonna be earned to be taken out of people's pockets for about 100 years from now. It's incredible. That's how these governments are so irresponsible. It's, it's, it just boggles the mind, doesn't it? Oh, please give me money so I can kill some Russians. It's like when, uh, who was it? Uh, some spokesman for Benjamin Netanyahu when they showed pictures lined up of a whole bunch of dead babies. They said, we're doing it for the rest of the world. It's, these are ticking time bombs and we're doing you all a favor. Talk about sick. Hmm. So I don't know. Zelensky said he's, he wants this money going to be paid with interest. Well, what happens if he loses the war? Who pays that money back? Who pays that money back then? The billions that, that Zelensky's getting. And it makes you wonder if, if he loses and he has become a multi-billionaire because of all of the money that's going to come out of your great-grandchildren's pockets, how does that make you feel? Incredible, huh? Oh, well, I still got a lot of stuff to talk about here. So, I don't know if this was, uh, oh, yeah, this was actually from very early this morning. And I guess the dead is, um, it accounts to over 10,000 people now in a very, very short time in Israel, just in a few weeks, three weeks or so. And 70% of these are women and children of the dead in, in, in Isra Gaza, excuse me, not Israel. And even the General Secretary of the United Nations, Guterres, he says it's a graveyard for children. And of course, they didn't like this in Israel at all because it's the truth. And recognizing the truth, you know, in these days and times, that's a no-no. You can't talk truth anymore. These are Orwellian times. So they're, they're directing scorn at this guy for telling the truth and stating, <laughs> stating the known facts. You can't say the truth. You can't state, state real facts. <laughs> and 1.5 million people are now left homeless because everything they've had has been destroyed. You know, and they're trying to, all this stuff, I think Alex Christopher was talking about that, all this sort of stuff. They're trying to push them all into Egypt. And, and then I, apparently they're trying to send a lot of these people to Jordan as well. You know, just get them exterminated off of the land. So, you know, ethnic cleansing so that Israel can take it over. Because, you know, they're the, they're, they're the chosen people. So let's, we can shove our problems off onto you guys because we're the chosen people. And by the way, they're, they're Arabic types people too. And we're Europeans. I mean, I mean, no, we come from this area. We, we're not Europeans. We, we're actually, we're coming from this area, not from from Europe. <laughs> yeah. Dock workers in Barcelona have stopped loading ships and of course they're trying to block ships, uh, refusing to load the war materials destined for Israel. And uh, from my area, uh, not exactly my city, but my state, Washington state, and I noticed that these were probably Macaw Indians. Uh, actually, I lived right by there and uh, they have canoes and things out there trying to block the ships of um, sending weapons to Ukraine. I mean, ugh, sending to Israel as well. And uh, yeah, I saw this little tape and it was, uh, uh, the paintings were actually, I looked like, looked like they were Macaw Indians, you know, totem pole painting things and all that. And, mm. I don't know how long that's gonna be successful. You know, they're just canoes. And an epidemic of hepatitis has broken out in five regions of the Ukraine with more than 30 people becoming sick. It makes you wonder what, you know, there's a lot of different varieties of hepatitis. There's A and B and C and all the way up to probably H. At least I know there's, I think there's up to, up to G at least. And some of these, you know, are very, you know, you can't get rid of them. And 
I don't know, very bad. I think you die from it. I don't exactly know. Um, and I believe a lot of this is coming from the water somehow. It, and it's uh, weird because, well, I didn't say this because it would be a bis, it would be misinformation if I told you that there's some country south of Belarus that have laboratories and they were threatening to put sicknesses in water uh, to poison people. So I wouldn't, I won't tell you that, but um, these people getting sick in Ukraine, it really makes you wonder. And then, you know, there's a lot of these theories talking about lab leaks and things like that. And I wouldn't even say that, that there's a, that that's a theory of mine, that it could be a lab leak. So, and that they were actually experimenting on some kind of sicknesses like this, like syphilis and coronaviruses and hepatitis and such things like that. You know, you can't talk about that stuff because I've, um, you know, if I did, I did by accident and, you know, and it was, I didn't mean it, but I got deleted for that from YouTube. I mean, I got uh, censored for weeks where I, you know, couldn't put up videos and, and all that sort of thing. So you're not allowed to talk about that. And they, they notice a lot of these problems because they're boiling water and then there's some sort of a residue left over on the bottoms of the pots and things like that, that it's a very strange thing. You know, so they found out that it has been transmitted through water. And, uh, yeah, but uh, some of this inform this misinformation that came out that the Russians somehow just made up, you know, it comes up uh, from at the beginning of the special military operation and the Russians, the Russians, they say that they found documentation you know, in a lot of these laboratories, uh, you know, in English, a lot of them, and they even presented it online. And I read it, obvious forgeries that this documents are saying that they're, they're making up all of these sicknesses and where they're planning on using them and avian flus and uh, all kinds of ridiculous things like that. So that's all untrue. And we all know that, right? Since August, the West has noticed that they're probably not going to be successful in their war, their proxy war against Russia. Um, so they're trying to, uh, <clears throat> you know, actually one of the things they're doing is they're trying to find more land for graveyards in Ukraine. And uh, um, there was a quote from, I guess, a very high sort of official. I don't know which country it's from, but he said, Ukraine will go down as one of the most catastrophic foreign policy decisions in U.S. history. The politically motivated decisions by NATO are crimes against humanity. And I would add to this that this is actually a, a it's more economic than anything. If, uh, if you look at it, you know, this is all economic based. They want to, the biggest goal is to collapse Russia, divide it up into pieces and move in to take over Russia's resources. So that's, that's how it is. Um, and of course, first it was supposed to be Belarus that they were supposed to overthrow, but then they used Ukraine instead. And that was supposed to be just a, a springboard, an easy springboard from Europe to, you know, to Eastern Europe and then into Russia to control Russia. And that, that was uh, the whole plan already. But, but it looks like now they're trying to use Kazakhstan they're really trying to go into Kazakhstan. I think it was Mekron or something that went to Kazakhstan. Anyway, a lot of the people in the West, they're trying to go into Kazakhstan and, you know, and I'm not going to tell you that they have weapons laboratories. West, the, the, the U.S. and the West has weapons laboratories in Kazakhstan because that would be misinformation too, right? Um, but anyway, like I said, starting in August, they realize it's not going to work you know, with Ukraine, I think. And that's when they started slowing down all the weapons. And then you see what's happening in Gaza, how quickly they started coming, pouring more and more weapons into Ukraine, weapons that they didn't have. They told you they didn't have. I mean, they're pouring it into, into Israel, weapons that they didn't have for Ukraine. But I don't know, it's some kind of magic that they come up with a whole bunch of these weapons and they got it there really fast, much, much faster than they were getting these weapons to, U to Ukraine. You know, at the beginning, of course, Ukraine was pumped full of weapons, you know, and they thought it was probably enough, you know, to, 
to attack West, uh, Russia. So they were amassing on the border and bombing Donbass even harder. And of course, Russia found out what's going on. So then they, they said, we're going to do it first. We're going to get you before you get us. You know, I guess I'm allowed to say that. Um, but I was always saying that Russia, uh, United States had a lot more weapons than what they're saying. Oh, we're running out. We have to give them illegal cluster munitions. Huh? You're right. <laughs> um, and this recent uh, attempted murder, or no, it was a murder, on Zaluzhny's assistant, uh, Mike Jones also put out on his telegram that there's rumors and a strong evidence that they believe that this assistant was actually an agent of Russia and maybe feeding information. So that's why somehow somebody had uh, actually assassinated this assistant guy. I don't even know what rank this was, guy was or if he was some kind of a civilian or whatever. Um, and I already mentioned that, you know, Ursula van der Leyen, now she's crying for the people in Gaza. Isn't that strange? She's not crying for the fact that they're getting killed en masse. She's crying against the blockade because she's already come out and says she's very much in favor of all the mass murders that, uh, of killing all these Palestinians. So she can't come out directly and say that. So she's trying to say, oh, it's inhuman. We're causing so much uh, uh, unemployment and we're just radicalizing this. So this policy is no good. It's no sustained blockade of Gaza. This policy has not worked. Hamas has continued to build up its arsenal while the economy of Gaza has collapsed. So it's just the opposite of what we wanted. 70% of young people in Gaza are jobless, 70%. And this can only lead to more radicalization. We all know it here in the room. And uh, even Joseph Burrell, he's coming out and saying stuff like this. Uh, <laughs> but any, I don't know, I'm not, I was trying to say that Ursula van der, has, van der Leyen has changed her opinion, but she didn't. She's still, I think, in favor of all the killing. These people really have no respect anyway. Um, <laughs> and it was an intellectual. He came out and he said that the German government supports Israel as a form of trying to wash away their guilt for what happened, you know, under Adolf the old days. Uh, and in my opinion, I think it's going to work out the opposite. I think people, obviously, I don't know, a lot of them are looking at Germany in a negative light. Huge protests in Berlin thousands and thousands of people. Of course, they're not going to show any of you that on the, in the mainstream media, but you know, we see it over here. Um, Joseph Burrell, he stated that the era of Western intellectual superiority is over. And he said that this has been noticed and believe it or not, he said by the failure of the sanctions. So isn't it strange that all of a sudden they said that they're, yeah, as you know, like, uh, that the economies are collapsing and all that of Russia and even Belarus. And uh, maybe they've been watching some of our videos from Mike Jones and myself or whatever, and they see that the supermarkets are all full and the people aren't, aren't begging on the streets, you know, in poverty. And they're actually doing massive building and construction and things like that over here. Actually, the economies are doing quite well. And uh, a lot of these raiders, like maybe the IMF or something is saying, you know, like that the expansion of the economy, for example, of Russia, I think it was like 2.7, Belarus is 3.5, and Germany is in minus. Most of, the, <laughs> most of the economies in the West are in minus. So maybe they're starting to acknowledge that instead of lying to the people. I don't know, because maybe the people are feeling that. And of course, it's right before the winter. Everybody's going to start having to uh, pay their heating bills, which is going to be very intolerable. So maybe they have to say that, and then maybe the people start to say, well, ah, they're starting to realize that, so maybe they're going to be on our side. I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. Any of you that are going to be hurting in Europe, maybe in the United States even, I don't know. So you have to think about that. When the winters, well, maybe come around, I don't know, late December, January, up into February, who knows how bad this winter is going to be. But that's about all I have to say for today. It's a lot of information, and I wasn't really going to be putting out a lot of information, but like I said, there's a couple of days here of uh, holidays, uh, Monday and Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. i got to go to school tomorrow, and I thought I would um, do another video like I used to do with a lot of information. And uh, 
who knows what I'm going to be doing in the future. I won't have that much time, so I can't be, I can't be doing these, these things that take a lot of time and scouring all kinds of sites and getting all kinds of information for you. Even though I like doing it myself, I like to stay informed. So anyway, that's about all I have for right now. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And that'll even tell me that actually you like these kind of videos. If I see a lot of subscriptions, new subscriptions coming after this video, then I'll start to realize, hey, you know, this is something pretty good and I got to be maybe trying to do as much of this as I can. So just talking, just talking. So thanks again for joining me and I'll see you on the next one. And I don't know, at least in about two days at least. Thanks again. Bye-bye.